planes need assembly. Each plane and action figure sold separately. There's Twiki. Get the robot. You can pretend he's being chased by Draco, Tiger Man, and the Draconian Guard. Calling Buck Rogers. Help! Buck Rogers, Twiki, Draco, and Tiger Man. Each sold separately by Mego. All right, welcome back, boys and girls, to a new edition of Top 10 Toys. This week, we are going to be looking at Buck Rogers. Now, this came through from as a viewer's suggestion from John's Box of Comics, so hopefully uh, he's looking forward to this list, as this was kind of fun to do. I remember this series uh, pretty well from when I was a kid, as uh, I found these little figures always mixed in with my Star Wars guys. Uh, they were kind of a cross between... Uh, a little bit like G.I. Joe's mixed with the Kenner uh, action figures, like a little bit, because you had that extra posability, uh, but they had that sci-fi uh, sci vibe that I, you know, I dug. So with the vehicles and some of the figures, especially the size with the three and three quarters, and then you had the larger Migos, uh, this was a fun, fun toy line. But uh, before we get into the toys, let's just, you know, take a quick look back and remind you guys who uh, Buck Rogers is. Now... He started all the way back in like the 20s. I think it was like 1928 or 1929 in a book by uh, Philip Francis Nolan, this Armageddon 2419 AD. Um, this was a little novella novel that they did back then that introduced us all to the character. And then soon after, he was hitting it up in uh, little comic strips uh, that ran in uh, you know, some of the papers uh, back in the day. Uh, maybe about a decade later, there was even a little movie serial uh that had some, uh, you know, live action, I guess you would say, uh, back in like 1939, thereabouts. Uh, there's like, I think, 12 episodes that kind of ran through, uh, yeah, there was a little movie serial, which was kind of cool. Now, the production value on the older one actually looked better than the one that came a little bit later in 1950 that ran on ABC. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, again, like 10 years later, ABC decided to try a little series doing Buck Rogers as well. But, didn't really seem to, uh, you know, hit that uh, that stride. But I think the thing that I really remember more about Buck Rogers is the parody done by Looney Tunes with Duck Dodgers. Uh, you know, Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century was uh, something that always rang, you know, rang in my head and uh, still sticks there even today. You know, Marvin the Martian was one of my favorites and still is one of my favorite Looney Tunes characters. And it's partly in, uh, you know, in relation to those uh, old cartoons with Daffy Duck there doing a little parody of his own. Outer space, like Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century. Now, another fun thing from that time, and now we're like in the mid 50s here, 1953 thereabouts. Uh, there was also comic books running uh, throughout, you know, throughout these uh, this time frame. Uh, Buck Rogers, I think he had his own comic. He was also uh, featured in uh, Famous Funnies. And there's this one that I just absolutely love this cover. And this is on 211. This is a Frank Frazetta cover. It, it's just gorgeous. I mean, I wish I had this book, but I just can't quite afford it. It's a little a little bit pricey. But again, so Buck Rogers is a character that started off in novels, comic strips. He's done comics. He's been on TV. They had him on t well, television shows, uh, in the movies. Uh, so he really ran the gamut way, way, way back in the day. But it wasn't until uh, about 1979 when NBC decided to do a new series uh, based on the character starring uh, Gil Gerard and uh, Aaron Gray, who you know, we all loved and is probably one of the early crushes of many of us, uh, including John's Box of Comics. And I'm with you, buddy. Uh, so let's get into looking at this list because most of the list is going to be tied into that television show and uh, the toys that kind of spun out of it from Mego. But yeah, we got a few others that will be mixed in uh, mixed in there as well. And another thing that uh, John uh, had mentioned about this is that this property, Buck Rogers, is coming back. George Clooney is uh, signed on to produce. I don't believe he's going to be starring in this because uh, I love Clooney, but he's getting a little up there in age to be uh, doing some sort of sci-fi action hero stuff. But producing, yeah, I'm, I'm sure this is something that uh, we can all get on board with because, again, we're talking about a character that's nearing, you know, a century. You know, it, it's 1928. It, you know, I think was the time when that novel hit and we were introduced to the character and it's, you know, 2021. So a hundred years later and this character is still hanging around. That is pretty impressive. So without further ado, let's just get into this list and see what we got going here. Now, before we hit to the top 10, I think it's also a good idea. Just kind of look back on uh, some of the toys that were there, you know, before. Uh, and some of these are quite, quite old. Uh, again, this is the character that went back to the 20s. So uh, seeing these little tin toys, this little uh, Buck Rogers rocket ship, I think was from 1934, is uh, it's pretty cool, actually. Uh, and this little wind-up, they were like little wind-up toys almost. I mean, these were the toys that like 
it's not even my dad's before my dad, I guess grandparents and would play with. And these wind up toys, they're, they're pretty expensive for me and 10 toys. I mean, we're talking like 400 bucks or so, if you could find one of these things. Uh, so you can see there was a little rocket ship one that they had. There was also this uh, rocket police patrol uh, little toy. I don't want to say figure because it's not really a figure. It's a little metal car rocket wind up thing. I don't know. Still kind of cool. I never had anything like this, but it would be kind of fun to uh, run across this if I could. Now, we recently uh, spoke with uh, artist J.G. Jones on uh, 3 Comic Money, and just by coincidence, when we were just hanging out and talking about other things that we all enjoyed and liked from Lord of the Rings and whatnot, he went and pulled out this Buck Rogers disintegration pistol. I think it was the disintegration pistol, uh, or was it the rocket pistol? I think it was the rocket pistol that he showed, and his didn't work anymore because they used to do that little spark thing. like It was like a little gear inside uh, inside the blaster of the gun, and you would pull the trigger and it would spark, but his, his didn't spark uh, anymore, but still, I would think it was between John's recommendation and JG pulling out this rocket pistol. I felt like I really had to do Buck Rogers next uh, for top ten toys. So that that little blaster, that uh, you know, that rocket pistol is uh, about a two hundred fifty dollar piece if you can find one uh, today. It's you know metal. It's pretty sturdy. You know, finding one in good shape is probably not or working probably isn't going to be easy to find, but uh, it is still really cool. So uh, just something to keep an eye out for, I guess. But uh, as you can see, that there was the rocket pistol as well as this disintegration disintegrator pistol, which is another uh, another model, another version. Again, these are toys from the '30s. Like so, this is this is old old classic stuff. This is well before again Mego handled this line uh, late '70s. I think it was like 1979. You know, into the early '80s, and they had uh, 12 inch figures like this Draconian Guard here as an example. And then you could see they also did the three and three quarters, which, as I mentioned at the start, these were kind of like GI Joe Kenner Star Wars size figures and had the posability of like a GI Joe, but uh, kind of really fit in more with the Star Wars line uh, and. Tons of things like this Star Command base thing that they had, Spaceport playset, uh, tons and tons of fun stuff. And uh, yeah, so this line, it, it uh, had quite a few figures. Now, not all of the little figures here on the three and three quarters made it to up to the 12 inches, but most of them had a one for one uh, uh, comparison. And a lot of times the prices are actually the same uh, for the little three and three quarters up to the 12 inch uh, figures. There isn't a really huge price difference uh, between them that I noticed when I did my research, but a lot of fun stuff in this line. Uh, you know, going back to Tweaky here, you can see there's this huge thing from these ads. This is, I think it's a JC Penny ad and you can see it had vehicles and figures and all kinds of, uh, all kinds of things that went with this line. So it's a fun one. So let's get right into it not waste any more time and see what we've got going here. So for our top 10, we're going to start us off with number 10, and uh, this is one of the villains who didn't really appear too much, like, really in the show. Many of the villains didn't appear all that often. It was more sporadic than anything, but Tiger Man is our top one. And uh, this one is, I saw a high sale of about 120 bucks, which is why he's coming in at number 10. And the uh, three and three quarter figure is, uh, again, about the same price-wise. Pretty close. Still about 100 bucks thereabouts. So Tiger Man, uh, yeah, pretty cool figure. I mean, he's got the little... Cheetah print, even though he's Tiger Man, but uh, hey, what are you gonna do? That's that's what they decided to go with. But uh, again, the three and three quarter there has a little bit of a different vibe and a little bit of a different design to his outfit, which is kind of cool to get that little bit of uniqueness there uh, between the two figures. But he was our number 10, which will take us into our number nine pick, which is this laser scope fighter. Now, this is like a little simulator thing, I believe there was like a little projector or a little light source. Thing. It was an odd little toy, but uh, still, you know, still pretty fun. You know, simulated lasers and explosion is uh, is what this big selling point was on this thing. And as you might have noticed it earlier in that JC Penny catalog, I think this was one they really tried to uh, sell as it was a high tech toy, you know, for the time. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. A little boxy for for what it's worth, but the little figure still he fit right in there. You can see Buck Rogers just you know chilling right there in the cockpit, which is a uh, you know pretty cool. Now this uh, laser scope fighter I saw one sell for about one hundred twenty five bucks, so that's why it's coming in at uh, number nine, which will roll us in to number eight, and we're gonna go with the uh, you know the main guy here, Buck Rogers. Yeah, you know, surprising he comes in this low on the list, but hey, there, with all this stuff, uh, you know. You can't not everybody's gonna make it to the top. So Buck is coming in at about two hundred dollars, uh, and the three and three quarter again uh, sealed in the package is about the same. 
Uh, this I'm showing you the 12 inch here, which is you know pretty cool. The boxes are uh, you can find them in decent shape a lot of times, but uh, the three and three quarters all have that kind of familiar carded, you know, carded look to them. So if you can find any, you know, absolutely uh, try to pick them up because it's not an easy find uh, in in packages for these things. But like I said, Buck is coming in there at uh, just about 200 bucks, which is making him number eight. And I think the one character outside of the, you know, Buck Rogers and Wilma that everyone would remember from this series is the little robot, you know, Tweaky, uh, because he just kind of stood out. I used to always just use him like he was a droid with my other Star Wars figures because, you know, he just fit right in. I mean, you just, you know, you play, you pretend, you use your imagination. I mean, that's what we did uh, back then. But Tweaky is about 210 bucks. And uh, you can see they had a little uh, wind-up walking version that was the 12-inch. Well, yeah, 12, but he fit with the 12-inch line. Uh, that, But it had that little bit of a walking action. And then uh, he had the little guy, the uh, little three and three quarters. But he was probably about half that size, if that. So he's probably less than two inches, this little figure. So he fit right in there again with your R2s and uh, other droids from, like, Star Wars. So, again, that's how I used them. But 200, 210 bucks thereabouts for Tweaky. So, this is going to take us into our number six pick. And we finally get to her, and this is, you know, Wilma Deering. So, another one of the iconic characters from the show, you know, played by Aaron Gray. This figure is didn't have a, a 12-inch version. They only made the three and three quarters, unfortunately, for her. And, uh, unfortunately... This was not an attractive figure. I mean, if you you kind of close in and look up in there, she kind of looks a little bit like Robert Patrick and T2 to me. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. This is the figure we had. Uh, would I have liked one that looked more like the character I saw on television? Absolutely. But yeah, we take what we can get. So Wilma is coming in at our number six spot outside of the top five. As uh, I saw one sell for about 220 bucks uh, carded in that uh, three and three quarter size. So... For those of you looking for Aaron Gray, like John's Box of Comics and myself, she didn't quite make the top five, but hey, close enough, right? And normally I don't mix in the vehicles with the regular figures, but with a toy line like this, I kind of had to mix in everything. So I have a mix of uh, everything that I could find for Buck Rogers wise, basically, to make this list. Uh, outside some of those 1930s toys, because that went a little back, a little too far for me to want to include them, but... Hitting us at number five, we're getting our first vehicle, and this is the Draconian Marauder, and this is about 300 bucks uh, in the box. Pretty cool. It kind of looks almost like a, I, I want to say you can put it right in there with the X-Wing. It's got a kind of an X-Wing design with the how it's shaped. I mean, the wings don't split into the X shape, but when the wings are closed, it kind of gives you that vibe, but a little bit of a, I don't know. It, it definitely, you can see why this toy line fit pretty well in with the Star Wars. You can just you know, play and pretend as you know, as you wanted to uh, without much uh, need for the imagination to uh, bridge that gap. But this uh, Draconian Marauder, again, 300 bucks is why it's at number five, which will take us to number four, which is another one of the ships that you can get with this line. And this is the Starfighter, which again, is a very cool, very cool design. Uh, you can see it, it fits right in there. Your figures, whether they be G.I. Joe's, Buck Rogers, or even the Star Wars guys could just pretty much fit in that uh, cockpit if you wanted them to, because they're all, you know, similarly sized. So this Starfighter is coming in at about 400 bucks, uh, if you can find one in the box. Uh, again, really cool, really cool design. I mean, with this, as age goes on, this white plastic is going to it's gonna show, show its age. It's going to look a little bit like coffee-stained teeth after, you know, decades of sitting around, you know, in boxes somewhere. But, hey, it is what it is, right? So... We're going to roll on our list to number three, which is the Land Rover. Now, this is an expensive piece in the box. This is 650 bucks if you can find a nice box one uh, for this Land Rover. It's not the most uh, exciting you know, design for a toy, but it is still pretty cool. I mean, it is a vehicle. You can pop your characters in. They can drive around on these little tank treads, and yeah, it, it is definitely still cool. 650 though, is a pretty tall order on price. But if you can luck into one, or if you can rebuild one with parts and pieces you can find out there, you might do pretty well for yourself. Which is why it is number three. So we're going to get to our top two, which we're going to move off our uh, 1979 Mego line with these last two. And uh, just 
price wise, I just couldn't uh, couldn't deny them, and it didn't want to just put them as honorable mentions or anything. So I really did want to include them on the list. And the first one we're gonna hit up here is uh, the Captain Action. Like this is the Captain Action suit that you could put on your Captain Action figure. And this is if you can find one in the box. And the one that I did find that was in the box wasn't even like nicely displayed in the box. It just happened to have a box with all the pieces basically thrown in it. But eight hundred and seventy-five dollars for this Buck Rogers Captain Action set. And you can see it comes with a suit, boots, and gloves, and little accessories, and blasters, and all kinds of fun little knickknacks. And if you can find all of these little pieces, you could see uh, 875 is a is a pretty pretty high high selling price. But it is still pretty cool. I mean, Captain Action was an interesting idea for for back then, a way to really reuse a toy uh, for for kids that you can just sell, you know, outfits and uniforms that you could swap them out, and you could make him whoever you know they were selling next, from superheroes to sci-fi characters to what you know whatever they uh they might wanted to you know sell different kind of uh different outfits definitely a cool idea and definitely probably something that should be looked at on its own but for for our purposes here this captain action set is coming in at number two which was just edged out for our number one spot again this one doesn't go back to those really really older you know you know guns and pistols from the 30s but even in the 1940s, uh, I am stretching how far back I'm going with our number one pick. But this atomic pistol, which is really, really cool, comes with holsters that you can see. This one came out after World War II. I think it was like 1946. So it's a little bit later. But this one was $900 uh, with this box and all the little extra sets with the holster and whatnot. Really awesome. Like, this would be something really cool to have in a collection. And that's why it's coming at number one. 900 bucks. That's... I know it's a high, high price, and there were three different versions of this. You had the, you know, the gold-looking one, and then you have like a just a kind of a plain pewter metal, kind of less fancy one, and then there was also like a silver kind of version of this atomic pistol. So there were three different options for you, and uh, all of them were pretty cool. Uh, so if you can find anything like that, obviously, yeah, pick it up, and uh, especially if you can find it for cheap. But it is definitely a cool little toy, a little figure, uh, not figure, cool toy thing to have. So that's why it came in as our you know, number one. So that's our Buck Rogers list. But I just still have a couple of more extra little things that I just want to bring up about the, you know, the property and toy line. So I will give you just a couple of honorable mentions. All right, so just a couple more things if you just want to hang in there for the honorable mentions. Uh, our first one is this Star Searcher, which is... I thought was interesting because this is actually a repurposed Micronauts toy. I forget what the Micronauts toy was called. It was another star or something or other, but it's basically a Mark Micronauts toy that they repackaged for Buck Rogers and you know sold it like that. I couldn't find any recent sales or anything to get any actual sales data on it, but I got to imagine something like this is probably pretty expensive, especially if you can find it in the box. Because from the research that I found, even the instructions that came with this still said Micronauts on the instructions. They didn't even bother to redo the instruction manual for Bu for Buck Rogers. So I think it was just kind of a cool little tidbit. So that's why I wanted to throw it throw it in here at the end for honorable mention. That Star Searcher thing, uh, that bright pink box, it also doesn't really align with the other packaging from the from the rest of the line, but. Hey, they tried to do something different, which is, uh, yeah, definitely interesting. Oh, there it is. Star Defender. That's what it was called. This was the Micronauts version. It was the Star Defender. I knew it was Star something. So the Star Defender, it was the Micronauts toy, which is basically what they repurposed for, uh, for Buck Rogers. So up next, just a couple of the little figures I wanted to uh, throw out there. Uh, another one of the female figures, Ardella. Uh, and this is only like a $40 thing if you can find it. So these aren't really expensive, these extra little ones I threw out there. But she doesn't, you know, it's definitely an interesting look you know, to her with the weird little horns and this almost I Dream of Genie outfit. But, hey, it, it is what it is. It was a interesting toy for the line. So uh, not everything science fiction has to be high techy. So here we go. Here's your, one of our examples of one that's not. Uh, another one we have here is a... Killer Kane, I think it was one of the villains. There is the 12 inch as well as the uh, three and three quarter version of them. And, and this is like 85 bucks um, that you can find. I think the uh, the smaller one might be the three and three quarter might only be another forty dollar figure, but definitely something interesting to look you know to look for if, if you're looking out there. And then I think the main villain Draco is another one uh, that we can just show as a as a figure you know as a 
you know, another thing that's out there that you might want to find. And that's again, like a $50, uh, $50 figure. If you can find one, uh, package i think loose these guys are most mostly in that 10 to 15 dollar range across the board uh for the three and three quarters i don't think you're going to pay too much extra for a loose 12 inch one but uh hey you never know it really all depends on condition and if you have uh all the little uh, accessories and whatnot but one figure that i did find or didn't or i should say did not find outside of uh some really really later issues but from the show was a uh, hawk now it wasn't until really, really recently that I could connect this character of Hawk to Bird Person from Rick and Morty. Uh, I am a Rick and Morty fan. Uh, as you can see here, I got my little uh, little shuttle that's sitting here when I uh, do my little podcasting here. But Bird Person, I didn't know that he was basically based off of Hawk. I mean, I just didn't really get it. And now I can kind of, it's kind of obvious. Uh but it's, uh, to be fair, it's been forever since I've seen Buck Rogers, so uh, I'm not going to hold myself too accountable for that. But, hey, there is a bird person figure out there in that Rick and you know, Morty toy line if you want to find one. So that one is out there for you to find if you are uh, interested in such things. But that's my list. You know, thanks for checking it out. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you like and you like these videos. Tell me what you want to see, what you don't want to see. As you can see, I take suggestions. This entire list was based off of the suggestion. So uh, definitely throw it out there in the comments and like and subscribe to my channel. I'm happy to have moved this show now to Tuesdays to kind of space my uh, my productions out. So I got a little more time to do things. And hopefully you uh, are liking the new uh, top 10 toys on Tuesdays because I like the alliteration. And I like, again, like the couple extra days that it affords me to uh, get this stuff done right and done for you guys. So hopefully you're enjoying it. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And I will see you all next time.